in, in Washington. And right in the Ward A community is Mr. Salim Adafo. Salim, thank you very much for your uh, patience. Um, our show is running over. We've had so many great conversations today that we tried to squeeze in the one show. Um, but you're also an ANC commissioner and a very, very active and responsive one, I have to say. Um, uh, a great you know, example of what um, a, a public servant should be. So I want to uh, congratulate you for that. But you are also, did you found the National Black United Fund? What front, what, how, did, how did we get this established and, and how does it link, if at all, to the generation that um, Absalon Jordan just spoke to us about? Well, I think that uh, calling for black organizations to come together has always been a call. Uh, Malcolm X asked for a united black front uh, during his time in the Nation of Islam in Harlem. Uh, as we saw, Stokely Carmichael, who eventually became Kwame Ture, made a call for a Black United Front. But the element of the organization I'm in now was started in Brooklyn, New York, as the Concerned Citizens to Save Our Youth. They pulled the coalition of organizations together around similar issues of uh, police misconduct. Then they eventually became the Metropolitan Black United Front. And because they were successful with some of their endeavors, they wanted to take the uh, mission national and then it became a national Black United Front. Uh, there is no connection to the element here in Washington, D.C. in terms of the people being able to connect and say that there is a carryover. But the concept and the mission, I still believe, are still the same. And so we're still here, like you said, dealing with issues of police misconduct years later. Uh, one of the things about uh, this current uh, rendition of the uh, Black United Front is that we've been able to expand into other things and advocate for many issues that pertain to uh, people of African descent here in America. So it's not just uh, police brutality. It could be electoral politics. It could be domestic violence. It could be any issue that Black people are facing that we need to go out and to organize around. I know part of your mission too is is uh, uh, is focused on community service. I know that we talked with Safeway earlier yes, about feeding, about f uh, food insecurity. You've been addressing that uh, in the community by setting up um, in in parks and feeding homeless people. Can you talk about what some of your com community service projects have been? Sure. One of the, um, I'm glad we're having this conversation during Black History Month. So watching the Black Panther Party for Self Defense. One of the things that I learned from uh, reading about Huey P. Newton and these documentaries is that people learn through observation and participation. And in order for to get, in order to get our people uh, mobilized and organized, we got to help meet some of their basic needs. So one of the things that we did was adopt the block at the intersection of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X here in Southeast, right down the street from the former. And we started our Feed the Hood program. And through that, we've been able to help register people to vote, get them information about different opportunities in the city to improve their situation. And it's all been done through the need for uh, food access. And additionally, we also clean the uh, block as well. So we have community cleanups there. So I think it's an excellent opportunity to go to some of our most vulnerable uh, populations and get people some of the uh, needs met, get their needs met, and then help them move forward. So, if with uh, with the uh, National Black United Front, um, how how what how is it growing its membership? Uh, what does it take for someone to be a part of the organization? So you could go to the website dcnbuf.org, dcnbuf.org, and the organization grows by having success. Right when we go out there in the community, we're able to deliver. People want to be a part of something that they can see that has an impact, and so it also grows by opportunities like this to be here to be able to talk to you all and thank you for the platform because it does help us, you know, grow and reach new people that we haven't been able to reach before. I think one of the things that we've been able to do uh, very well is to hit core issues that impact people's you know day-to-day -day lives and produce results so because we've been able to produce those results and be consistent at it it's been um this, this has been a really good thing we don't necessarily uh, not necessarily we don't really get funding from a lot of outside sources so then we're able to speak to a lot of issues that we see fit 
And so that that separates us from many other organizations. And because we're able to do that, we can touch on some critical issues, say things some people might want to say but can't because of whatever other affiliations that they have. And being consistent at that, I think, is a beautiful thing. And for us as people of African descent here in America, one of our struggles is being able to have an uh, independent political and financial voice you know, for us. So because we have been that, it's been a, a difficult journey, a hard one for sure, but it's allowed us to have some success. And we don't necessarily look at trying to have a large membership. We look at trying to have an effective membership. And when we can be effective, you know, we know that quality is definitely better than quantity. So we've we've had quite a few folks. I mean, uh, of course, reporter James Wright, who's been get, keeps giving you shout outs, and 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 I think he, he's one of your biggest fans. Uh, actually, my brother was on. I didn't get a chance to uh, let Ab know that Calvin said hello. But um, you know, the thing about it is, we all try to work hard to to make life better, to make conditions better for our communities. And I guess in closing, if there's a mission or something that um uh, you know ab went on to talk about some of the things that um the black united front of that day mm -hmm. was able to accomplish when it's all said and done what would you like to to say we did this i mean you, besides feeding people which is mm -hmm. tremendous but with the needs of the community which you're so uh, aware of what would be one thing that you would like to see in buff say we made that happen that we raised the political consciousness of our community so much so that it was able to impact the community to where we can have institutional change and build black political power so that black people can control the economics, the political structure and the social element of our community. Um, that opens up the door for a, another conversation. <laughs> so right. we will stick a pin in that and come back to that because, uh, and I think that's one we need to have before we have our next election, because, you know, when you get down to voting, uh, people are just trying to figure out what button to push, but organizing is a whole different, um, can of worms. So yeah, I'd look forward to having that conversation. I want to thank you so much for being with us, Salim. Uh, anything, any closing remarks you want to make? Uh, check us out on the web, uh, BCMBUF. Uh, that's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And I want to encourage everybody to become a member of an organization that is doing work in the community. We have to be organized. All right. Thank you so very much. And um, we'll be watching for what you all are doing next. And thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. All righty.